And I realized that I'm going to dare greatly. I'm going to step out of this, you know, no matter what anyone tells me. It was a very hard thing for me to do, to step away from work. And mind you, I was doing well. I was, uh, you know, on a good in a good place at work. And yet I decided to quit. And it was one of the hardest decisions I've had to make. And I needed to do it. I needed to take that step and be brave. I'm so, I mean, I cannot even say how glad I am. <laughs> it was like jumping off the deep end. Very scary. I'm the person that I wanted to be for so long. For so long, I wanted to be this person. And I am that. So I'm living the dream. ADHD Rewired, episode 98. This is the show designed to help those of us who have really good intentions and a slightly wandering attention. My name is Eric Tivers. I'm a licensed clinical social worker, coach, and consultant. We know that starting can be the hardest part, so let's get started. But first, let me thank our sponsors. Support for this podcast comes from Audible. For a free audiobook download, go to... No, no, no. Stop, stop the yet. They've heard the Audible promo enough. We'll get back to it next week. I want to... Uh, this episode is going to be brought to you by ADHD Rewired Coaching and Accountability Group. Listen, I want to share it with you before we actually get started with the episode, a montage of what the coaching group is all about. This was a recording that I kind of cut together. This is from the last coaching call of the very last session of my, my most recent group. So if you've been thinking, if you've been wondering, what could I potentially get out of being a part of the next group? Maybe this will answer that. And I want to thank everyone for my last coaching group. And you know who you are, who's given me permission to share this. Thanks, guys. My biggest learning from this group is that I'm going to get a lot more done in my life if I'm kind to myself. I've learned that meditation is magic. Release of the sense of shame. I don't think I would have been able to reach that without the group. I feel like I've learned a lot about ADHD. But another huge takeaway for myself is just being more compassionate towards myself and understanding that at the end of the day, these things that I struggle with, it's okay. You know, it, it is it is okay. By being more compassionate, it's made me a happier person. I just really appreciated everything that you guys said yesterday. I'm going to go back and listen to that over and over and over. <laughs> and I never would have expected to come away from this with that, is the tools. It's about humanity, you know, about our, our common, you know, our shared needs, our shared struggles, being able to be safe enough to open up. There's so many times when just a little way of reframing it, whether you yesterday um, saying systems development. I realized that before this, I would have I would have really felt bad. I would have shamed myself and all of that. So I'm feeling more comfortable in my own skin. I'm just like, okay, so I did that and it's okay and no big deal. And I'm just going to go back and, you know, follow up. But that's one thing that this has helped me do is really feel comfortable in my own skin. And in doing that, that's kind of awakened in me a passion for advocacy and have been thinking about how can I connect that with my career. I do think that the mastermind is a really pretty cool thing, you know, to have the kaleidoscope of different angles and people contributing. <laughs> I'm just clapping at myself because something good happens. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Oh, Make something good happen for you. Join the next ADHD Rewired Coaching and Accountability Group. Go to coachingrewired.com. That's coachingrewired.com. Schedule a free 20 minute consultation with me there. That's coaching rewired.com or just click the ADHD rewired logo on your podcast player and see the abridged show notes. There will be a link directly to that page at the top of the show notes there. Now let's get on with the interview. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of ADHD rewired. I am glad to have in the virtual ADHD rewired studios, my guest, Nisha Subramanian. 
Nisha decided to step away from a busy and promising career as a technology consultant to re-examine her life and pursue a wholehearted life. After two years of pursuing creative expression, self-improvement, travel, and time with family, she is getting ready to get back into the workplace and hopes to bring everything she has learned with her on the next phase of her journey. I crossed paths with Nisha um, at a Brene Brown event in Chicago. Nisha, welcome to the podcast, and I'm so happy to have you on. Thank you very much. I'm very happy to be on here, too. So I always like to give a little bit of the backstory whenever we have a rough start. So um, after, so Nisha, who was in the most recent coaching group, um, so I've known her well and have talked to her many of times actually after the, the coaching group. As I asked her, so how do you pronounce your last name correctly, which I was embarrassed to actually ask. Then she embarrassedly confesses to me that I've been pronouncing her first name incorrectly for the entire time that I've known her. <laughs> I've been calling her Nisha for like forever. And then she says, you know, I, I do have a confession to tell you. And um, I am glad that you did tell me that it's Nesha. And as I was uh, introducing you, we, this, I had to do the intro twice because I just, I was laughing. Um, so I thought I should share that. Whether or not that's relevant, I have no idea, nor do I even really care, but I'm happy to have you on. Thank you. I'm very happy to be here. And thank you, Becca, for the uh, vote of confidence to tell people how my name is actually pronounced. <laughs> you know, I, I imagine you probably get more mispronunciations than, than I do. I get a lot of Tivers um, for my last name. Uh, you know, it's, it's Tivers. And uh, I, I used to, you know, think, why do people, you know, say it incorrectly so often? It's, it's Tivers. It rhymes with rivers. It seemed obvious to me until someone pointed out to me when they asked me when I was doing a webinar, I said, is it, is it Tivers like rivers or Tivers like divers? I was like, oh, I never thought of that one. So that's exactly what happened with me too. So uh, Becca said, oh, it's tr uh, Nisha like Trisha. And I said, oh yeah, that's right. And then I was telling my husband, I have to use that next time someone asks me about my name. It's Nisha like Trisha. <laughs> I should have just told you that. I forgot about that. <laughs> Already. So then what so then what rhymes with Sabrami so, <laughs> Unfortunately I'm nothing. So sorry. Uh Subramani. And I always like write out phonetically the names and even that I'm just really bad with names. Yeah, no, that's a hard name. Every time someone asks me to spell my name, I'm like, Do you have a minute? Because two or it's three. going to be a long while before I'm done, and you're not to interrupt me before I'm done. Because <laughs> uh, you know, six letters later, they've lost their patience, and they're like, "Okay," and I'm like, "I'm not done." <laughs> so let's let's begin by just kind of talking about kind of what you were doing that led up to your kind of reinvention, uh, um, kind of period that you're kind of in the end of right now. Uh, so you, as we said in the introduction, that you were in technology, you were doing consulting work, um, you had recently got a promotion, um, which was exciting, and you were getting, you know, paid more, which was exciting, but... Yes, um, it, but. Was a very, it was a very exciting time. In fact, I'll take you back a little bit before the promotion, too. Um, I was diagnosed with ADHD in 2012, December of 2012, and uh, at the time, struggling at work, actually. Um, not the work part of work, the administrative part of work, which, you know, I remember people coming up to me and going, this is the easy part. Why are you struggling with it? I hate that. Why, yeah. Why are timesheets so hard? Why are expense reports so hard? Um, and I had no explanation because I was doing really well at the creative, the project management, you know, anything that was my job responsibility, I was doing a great job on. But administrative uh, issues, I was really, really sucky, uh, to, you know, lack of a better word. Um, so at the time, I was really struggling and, you know, getting that diagnosis 
really helped me to uh, you know understand what i needed to work on and for the whole year that i went to therapy after that that was my focus to make sure i undo whatever damage i had done um at work and at the end of that one year i got promoted and i was you know over the moon it was a great experience and um and then i just took a step back and i said you know now what and uh, i started to realize that my life had become all about work and uh, i loved work i mean there are aspects of my job that i truly truly loved and uh, my my coworkers were great uh, you know a lot of my managers i i really really i mean to date i really respect them and i'm in touch with them um but you know life had just taken me on a wild ride and i was along for it and it just it all boiled down to uh, my husband's birthday or uh, into 2013 and we're sitting at lunch with my in-laws and my husband and uh, it's his birthday and i'm snapping and i'm sa- you know being snarky saying really mean things and we came back from that lunch and my husband said you know even for you this is really strange what's going on and you know that started off a whole conversation about maybe i should take a step back and really um stop identifying with that unhappy person i had become because a lot of people were thinking that nisha is not a positive person and i never wanted that image of me to go out there that's so interesting cuz you know just that the thought of you not being a positive person i'm like that's not the that's not the nisha i know i know you as a very positive person and i love that i have uh, you know changed that image of me i mean my one of my best friends is a sunny positive person and he has you know he's really influenced me in uh, you know becoming a more positive person uh, but i remember when i was in my negative space i used to hate when he would tell me to be grateful for the sunny day or grateful that we got let off work early or you know i remember Isn't resenting that interesting that. and i and i and i've seen that with with a lot of people both in my my work and just in my personal relationships that when when they're in that bad space you know that unhappy space it like pisses them off when you know someone tries to encourage them to you know there's a, here's a thing that you can you know be happy about um and i think there's a difference too there when you're dealing with with actual clinical depression versus just like situational life stress um right. uh you know and and sure one can kind of lead to it to the other um because when you're dealing with clinical depression it's like it's not about you know what's your your grateful or not grateful about there's something in the brain that's that's different um right but but what mm. you're talking about is is situational like just I'll use your right. I'll use your word right. suckiness yeah suckiness well i think uh, the the changing point and you know just quitting work doesn't change everything right mm-hmm. and i used to think it would i used to think my life would be sunshine and roses as soon as i handed in that resignation it wasn't the first couple of days were very tough i'm used to being a workaholic using work as a shield and uh, it was when i read uh, you know in in gifts of imperfection by brenny brown i'm a fellow brenny brown uh, fan like you um and uh, when i read there that she said it's not an attitude of gratitude it's a practice of gratitude mm mm-hmm. and uh, it's not the joyful who are grateful it's the grateful who are joyful yes and uh, looking at it that way really changed it for me and i have a today i have a gratitude practice i wake up every morning i write three or four things i am grateful for um and it has taken i mean i would say the fact that you think of nisha as a positive person means that the gratitude practice works. Nisha, can I ask you to to share something maybe that you wrote this morning in your your uh, gratitude journal? Well, I'm embarrassed to say I didn't write it this morning yet because I woke up and I immediately had to do the <laughs> do this, but I will tell you what I wrote uh, recently um I um I mean it can be something very mundane, right? Mm-hmm. um we watched a movie with a bunch of my friends so that was on there grateful for the movie that my friends and i watched grateful for the candle that i got as a gift for them from them um 
grateful that my sister is in India right now. Um, you know, it's little things. Uh, and some, it doesn't, you know, it could be, we think that, you know, really profound things have to go in there. But no, it just ha- it can be a new magazine mm-hmm. in the mailbox or, you know, a new friend that you made. They're all really, really powerful to add joy back in your life. You know, I have found, and and maybe this is just my own perspective, that because those of us with ADHD are a, we tend to notice like everything that I think in some ways it's almost easier for us to practice gratitude because we can notice things that other people don't always notice. That is true. That is so true. You know, those, those, uh, you know, whenever I'm like listening to like either a a book on mindfulness or maybe a guided meditation and, you know, there's something about like, uh, talking about like, well, next time you're on a walk, you know, look at the, the, the way the, the shadow of the sun, you know, reflects on the, 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 the flowers. I'm like, I always do stuff like that. You know, it's like, I'm always like interested in just how, you know, the world around me, but I think really being, you know, kind of going in deep to that. I think that really is true. Um, I remember maybe about a year ago, I was kind of going through a, a kind of a seasonal depression and um, I was getting this real funk about not having any windows in my office. And I was like, I got to get an a office that has windows. And and I was just really just not in a, a good kind of headspace. And I think I maybe even talked about it on the podcast. And I remember walking into my office and making this conscious choice as I was opening, as I was unlocking my, my office door. And I had, and I even said, I remember saying this out loud. I'm really grateful that it takes me three minutes to drive to work. And it was like, it's one of those moments where like, Oh my, all that, you know, that, that mindfulness stuff, it actually does work. You know, it's cause I just right. felt this, like this feeling of dread, just like wash away. Yeah. And yeah. so it and is, it's, it's effective. Yeah, it is. It is super effective. And trust me, I mean, you know, a lot of my lot of my coworkers and friends who have known me from this pre uh, from this journey before before I uh, decided to take a break, they would not even believe the kind of transformation I've had. Uh, it and I think the gratitude practice was every. It has everything to do with it. So, what, um, what were you like as a kid? As a kid, uh huh. Um, I think I was uh, very creative, very uh, always like, you know, doing something. And um, I remember like drawing a lot, singing a lot, dancing a lot, um, very talkative at home, very shy in school. Hmm. Um, Pretty, uh, I would say I was very shy in school. I remember school being a not very fun time for me because I was almost painfully shy and and were you, um, did you go to school in the U.S. or in India? In India. Okay. I went to school in India. Um, what, what was I that was, like? Well, uh, I don't know any other type of schooling, okay. so <laughs> I wouldn't be able to compare and contrast. But uh, I had a very good, uh, I, I went to a really nice school. I mean, I'm very grateful for that. Uh, my brother, who's 16 years older than me, had a big say in me going to uh, a good school. And so he was very adamant that, uh, they pick a really good school for me. And, you know, by the time he was already in the U.S., so he made sure that I was settled into a good school. And mm. that really, uh, you know, the fact that my siblings really, um, you know, were instrumental in making sure that I had a good education made a huge difference because um, my school had a big emphasis on, uh, you know, like my, uh, you know, school was very uh, into, you know, meditation and, uh, there was a emphasis on non-competitiveness and sounds um, just like American schools <laughs> said nobody ever. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So it was a, it was a very good experience. I mean, all schools have their little pockets of flaws. So my school did too, I guess. But um, if I really try to look at the positive of it, uh, I, I'm very grateful for the education because today I, you know, I, when I, uh, see people tell me they didn't have a good English education or, um, you know, they, uh, kind of my English education was very comprehensive and I'm very grateful for that today when I write, because for the longest time I didn't read a lot and yet I have a semi-decent vocabulary that I'm, you know, I'm quite happy about. So, uh, and yeah. you, you blog, right? 
Yeah, I blog. And what's uh, uh, what's your blog? So my um, when you say what's your blog, what do you mean? Like Just your, your what what is it about, and what's and give the uh, the the URL to it. Okay, as well. um, the URL is nishnu dot com n i s h n u dot com, and I started blogging uh, right after I quit work in twenty thirteen, and uh, the emphasis was to talk about how my experiences have been outside the cubicle and uh you know so that sounds I was, like a great title for a book life outside yeah. the cubicle yeah i know <laughs> maybe i should write a book <laughs> um but uh yeah so i started blogging about the books i had been reading um you know the places i was traveling to um any kind of experiences i've been having any uh you know, I went, I took dance lessons. I took music lessons. Um, I even went to a Spanish class, failed attempt, but I went to a Spanish class. Um, and now when you say failed attempt, what do you mean? I just didn't, it didn't click. It didn't click. I speak a lot of languages, but it just didn't click. Okay. Um, it didn't sit with me. Um, and then I fell in love with French. So now I'm very confused. So... <laughs> I don't know whether to continue my Spanish education or start learning French. I think I'll just be in this limbo forever. <laughs> so I'm looking at your blog right now. Um, and you have something on storytelling. Um, you're talking about uh, that your mind kept protesting through the practice with proclamations like, this just sucks. Why did I, why did I fall sick again? Why me? Um, so this, what, what, tell me about this, uh, this entry here. Oh, um, so I went to a yoga class, right? Uh, went to the yoga class to realize that my usual teacher wasn't there. And uh, there was a sub. And, uh, you know, that usually is a big downer for someone who goes to the same class over and over again and expects consistency. Mm -hmm. um, so the minute I saw her, I was like, oh, you know. <laughs> and uh, then I was, you know, I was... Uh, you know, in the beginnings of a second cold. I've had two colds this season. I don't know how. So it was at the beginning of a cold and she was playing this loud music. The light was on. It was just a really chaotic, kind of miserable experience. And I was just, not, you know, for all that I'm professing here, I, I wasn't practicing it at the time. I was really uh, letting my mind take me on a, you know, wild ride of misery, like I've written. Um, and then suddenly she just helped me correct one of my poses. And, you know, in my mind, I was making up this teacher doesn't care. This teacher doesn't care enough to turn off the light or doesn't care enough to lower the volume of the uh, music. Um, you know, she's just she just cares about the people who've been do doing yoga for many years and not people like me. So and this, this was the story that you were telling yourself. Exactly. This was the story I was telling myself. and. Then she comes along, she helps me with a pose and she gives me this big, serene, like kind smile. And I just look at her and I think she's just so nice. Like, why am I doing this to myself? <laughs> you know, why, why, do, why was I building this story up about her that is so not true? And suddenly, you know, my mind was going, okay, it's not bad. Like, I know I'm not feeling my best, but this is not bad. And uh, by the end of the class, I will say I was even relaxed and it made me realize how easily we're just like so quick to make snap judgments and rush to the end of our story. And um, like Brené Brown says in Rising Strong, you know, that's not, you want to stick with the middle. You want to stick with the mess until you've really looked at what is true and what is not, and then come to a conclusion and if you have to. Um, I, I mean, I'm, I'm very, uh, I, I won't say that two years ago I was able to talk like this or even mm. think like this. She's given me the vocabulary to be able to do that. And I think if absolutely, I think that was one of the, the big appeals about Brene Brown is, uh, the, just the, the words and language that she uses, uh, to describe these experiences. Um, I just think are very, very powerful. Yeah. What was your yeah. first Brene Brown uh, uh, experience? So my first experience was watching her on Oprah. In fact, I didn't know about her until 2013. So she was reading 
daring greatly the poem mm-hmm. from her book i mean she the uh, who wrote that again um, uh, fdr field um, um right. franklin delano roosevelt right um and she read that and this was a really tough time for me because i was still trying to figure out whether i should quit or i should stay on at work um and i remember bawling my eyes out when i read that I'm gonna um, let me let me actually play a, a, that clip really quickly. It is not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly who errs, who comes short again and again because there is no effort without error and shortcoming, but who does actually strive to do the deeds, who knows great enthusiasm, the great devotions, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at the best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, who at the worst, if he fails, at least fails, while daring greatly. Okay, and so you're saying that you're, you're bawling your eyes out. Yeah, and uh, and I realized that, you know, um, I'm going to dare greatly. I'm going to step out of this. And, uh, you know, no matter what anyone tells me. And, you know, uh, Eric, like, there's this, there's this uh, strange uh, message that I have gotten from many people that somehow for a woman, it's easier to step away from a job and that it's a lot harder for a man to do it. And uh, I, didn't, I didn't feel that way. I mean, I was raised, you know, as you know, I was raised by a feminist. Um, my dad and mom were very particular about me uh, always giving my best and achieving my best. And there was no, in fact, my dad was always sending me those messages about how Um, it's important for me to work and earn my own living. So in some sense, it felt very, it was a very hard thing for me to do, to step away from work. And mind you, I was doing well. I was, uh, you know, on a good, in a good place at work. I wasn't, uh, if I had given up at a low period, it was one thing, but I fought that and I came to a good place and yet I decided to quit. And it was the hard, one of the hardest decisions I've had to make. And, you know, I'm so grateful I tuned in that day and saw her read that poem because when I did, it just made me painfully aware that um, I needed to do it. I needed to take that step and be brave for me. And uh, I'm so, I mean, I cannot even say how glad I am. <laughs> I imagine it was quite scary. Very scary. It was like jumping off the deep end. And I say this a lot. I don't even have a physical f- uh, frame of reference for what that feels like because I don't swim very well in the deep end. <laughs> so it was like really not knowing anything and just jumping. And uh, oh, I'm so, I mean, I, I, I don't know if I'll land on my feet yet. I mean, I'm yet to look for jobs and things like that. But I don't count that as being an indicator of whether I'm landing on my feet anymore. Um, I think I have already landed on my feet. I'm, I'm the person that I wanted to be for so long. For so long, I wanted to be this person. And I am that. So I'm living the dream. You know, Nisha, as you were saying that, um, what, what strikes me is the, your confidence in your own kind of self-worth that you just feel very like at, at peace with, you don't know what's next. You don't know what's going to come right? and you know that you're worthy no matter what. And I think it's, it's very, um, hearing you say that, uh, felt to me very sincere, very real. Um, and I think that's, that's, that's amazing. Thank you. And I should say, I should say, um, I didn't even have this self-worth piece completed and done until I did your coaching group. Um, I can say I was happy. I can say I was, um, I was really happy when I, at the time that I met you at that Rising Strong event, uh, I was happy with my life, but 
going, you know, doing the coaching group really like, you know, you were talking at your webinar yesterday about how, um, you know, you can give a man strategies and tools and tricks and they can do really well on a day to day basis. But, you know, uh, teaching them how to um, feel better about themselves can make you supercharge your productivity, right? And it, the analogy of like teach a man to f- fish, mm-hmm. you teach him, you feed him for a lifetime. This coaching group taught me how to fish, and I'm so grateful for that. I love that. So Thank grateful. you for saying that. That's that's that is uh, wow. I sometimes get tongue tied when I get like, like hear things like that. Um, so thank, I just want to say thank you for for saying that. W- now, would you um, be interested to hear your perspective from what you recall about um, when when you and I first met? Um, when you and I first met, uh, you asked Brené a question, and you said you run a podcast on ADHD. And then reading about how about uh, reading about her guidepost in um, Gifts of Imperfection about uh, productivity and self worth, it changed your life. You said it changed your practice, and that was like, yes, I have to meet this man. <laughs> Um, and I, <laughs> I'm pretty, the rest of the whole uh, event, I was going, I have to meet the guy. I have to meet the guy. Don't forget. I have to meet him. I have to meet him. Don't forget. <laughs> and so right after I just like, I was like made a dash and like made sure I came and said hi to you. Um, and, uh, yeah. And I remember having like a short conversation with you. And, uh, I remember wondering if you have ADHD too, uh, just by the cues, you know, you you know so when someone has ADHD somewhat, and uh, yeah, I I don't I didn't even plan to like really do anything about it, um, but I happened to schedule a call on your calendar, and then you know, <laughs> one thing led to another, right? Right, right. So if you want things to move very quickly, schedule a call on Eric's calendar. It just moves whether. <laughs> you... True story. I'm, I'm yeah. telling you, it's like. Please don't leave me a voicemail. I just <laughs> schedule it on my calendar. I, and I've been, I've been really struggling thinking about actually like setting up my voicemail so you actually cannot leave a message, um, or just like, go to my website and schedule that call with me. It will happen. Like, right, don't right. add something to my to do list if it's on my calendar. You're, it's going to be there. Right, right, and that's what happened with uh, me because I. Just for, just on a whim, I thought, let me schedule this call. You called me back immediately, and you left an impression enough that um, I started to think, you know, keep in mind, I haven't heard your podcast still. <laughs> Wait, so, at, at this point or now? No, no, no. That would be... See, that would almost be, you know, as is, is, is awkward as, you know, waiting for knowing someone for several months before you let them know that you're not saying their name correctly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so we're even? <laughs> we're even. <laughs> no, I mean, I mean to say at the time that I met you, I didn't know Eric Tivers. I didn't know ADHD Rewired, or the podcast, the community. None of that. The T-shirts, and... the the logo, the 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 action figure. Sorry, I was, I was uh, have you ever seen Spaceballs the movie? No, I haven't. Oh, you should see it. <laughs> um. So yeah. So then, um, I remember having this conversation with my sister, who is one of my best friends, and uh, she, you know, told me she said you walked away from a whole like career for two years. Just add the amount that this this coaching group costs to that, and just move on with it. Stop making a big deal of this. And um, I'm so glad. Like between her and my husband, you know, they gave me the right push, and there was no question of you know not doing this. And um, and then I should also thank the other people who you interviewed from your previous coaching groups. Um, I heard uh, Maria, I think, and Marie. Mm-hmm. 
Anne Marie, sorry, uh, not Mar- Maria. Uh, Maria Billing from um, uh, oh, from. Oh, so there was someone called Maria too. Th- there was someone called Maria. Yeah. Yes. So I wasn't wrong. Okay, Maria and uh, Kamran. Mm-hmm. I heard both of their interviews, and then that gave me the push to uh, go ahead and sign up. And I'm so, I mean, I so glad, so glad I did it. So glad. Sometimes things don't always go as expected, like being able to say, I'm way ahead of schedule. Right now, I'm recording this at 6.35 p.m. on January 11th, and at this very moment, I have 14 calls scheduled, 14 screening calls scheduled for the next coaching group, but there's only one spot left. You know, I'm going to be honest, while I... Certainly, I did expect for this group to fill up. I really did not think it would fill up so quickly. So after giving it some thought, I have decided for the very first time ever, I am going to be opening a second section for this group. To celebrate the success, I'm going to be hosting a few events. The first is a live one-hour productivity Q&A. It will be this coming Thursday. From 11 to 12 Central, don't worry, I'm going to translate it for the rest of you. That's noon Eastern and 9 Pacific. I'm pretty sure that's accurate. If you missed the recent webinars, High Tech and Low Tech Solutions to Supercharge Your Productivity, I scheduled two more dates for this. They're going to be the next two Mondays, January 18th and January 25th. Both will start at 11 a.m. Central. That's 12 p.m. Eastern, 9 Pacific. There will be links to all of these events in the show notes for this episode or tap on the ADHD Rewired logo in your podcast player and it should open up the abridged version of the show notes and all the links that I'm mentioning now will be right there. It's kind of like magic. We're going to get back to the conversation with Nisha in just a sec. I really do know how it can be to to think and think and think and actually decide and then not take action. I am very acquainted with this feeling. It's like this heavy feeling of shame and then it just takes up this mental space. I, I wish I wasn't so well acquainted with that feeling, but I am. So I can tell you this. It only takes a few minutes to schedule your screening call. And together, you and I will decide if this group is right for you. Go to coachingrewired.com to schedule your 20-minute screening. Don't wait. The next group won't be until May. It's time to invest in you. Learn, grow, and connect. Join us for the next ADHD Rewired Coaching and Accountability Group and prepare to get your ADHD Rewired. Boom. 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 Audible. Trial.com slash ADHD Rewired. For your free download. Trial.com slash ADHD Rewired. Trial.com slash ADHD Rewired. Go to audibletrial.com slash ADHD Rewired for your free audiobook download. Um, so what was your like? Just describe to me if you could, um, like, just your overall experience. Um, and being part of the coaching group. Um. So my my experience is a uh, you know it's not just about the productivity piece for sure. I mean, I learned a ton of strategies, and to this day. Sometimes I'll come into a new, uh, you know, new um, application for the strategies that I didn't think was possible. Uh, so I'm learning constantly, like so many tools in my toolkit. So Can to you say. share one or two of those? So I was telling you about this yesterday, so I'll just use that. Um, so like uh, one of during one of our ADHD study halls, I think mm-hmm. it was, um, you said, you know, remember to keep time aside to you know tear down your work and set put everything away and i i realized at the time that i never do that which is why there's piles everywhere 
And, uh, you know, my poor husband, I mean, he deserves to have a clean home, you know, and I don't want to. <laughs> so I've, I've uh, you know, become more conscious of that, that uh, piece now. And now when I take on a project, um, 15 minutes before the end time, I will start wrapping up, regardless of what That's stage huge. I'm in. And uh, it, it really, I mean, it's such a great tip, such a great tip. And this is one of hundreds of things mm. I've learned. So uh, any others that you want to share? Um, let's see. I mean, using timers, your uh, trip uh, acronym, uh -huh. um, the t uh, timers, reminders, input and process. Great. Wow. Right? You're, a good, and, you're a good student. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. am. I was the nerd for the longest time. So <laughs> what do you mean was? Sorry. Okay, <laughs> I am. <laughs> I am a nerd, actually. I just got really excited about uh, Khan Academy. Mm -hmm. uh, they have this whole uh, course on economics and finance. And so I just bought a new notebook from CVS. I'm going to take that whole course. <laughs> so wow. I am the nerd. <laughs> Wow. Um, so yeah, so a lot of uh, strategies like that. You know, I have a timer now. Star charts. Um, talk never about, use talk them about your star chart, and it was so funny because you were like, you. So we did this, uh, and I know this will be released in. I don't remember what date. I think uh, sometime in January. But we're recording this on uh, December thirty first, and we end yesterday. Uh, we did a webinar, and at the end of the webinar, I invited panelists uh, to to you know ask questions. And you sh wanted to share your your star chart, and you were like embarrassed, of, or you're apologizing about like how excited you were about your star chart. I was like, it's awesome that you're excited <laughs> about the star chart. <laughs> I tend to be embarrassed because I don't run into like most of my friends don't have ADHD, <laughs> so many times I'll be super excited about some some new system that I've created. And they'll just look at me like, okay, <laughs> you know, <laughs> they're so excited. It's almost like uh, they'll be, you know, sort of patronizing me. <laughs> they're there, so, Nisha. They're there. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so my new system of star charts. So I realized that I love star charts. I love stickers. So I decided to combine these two things and I got one of these free January to December calendars online, mm -hmm. printed them up, basically took seven copies of this calendar and uh, bound them up together in a book. And I'm going to use each monthly page to track habits. Now, I don't know how far this exercise is going to go, but if even if I have one month, where I, you know, say work out more or meditate every day, um, I'll be happy with it. So that's one of the things that I've really picked up from your coaching group, Eric. It's to be kind to myself when my systems fail. And that has given me the courage to go out and try new things. Whereas earlier, I'd be stuck in this rut of why does this matter? I'm going to give it up in a month anyway. It's fine if you give up in a month. You lasted a month. That's, yeah. that's good. Inconsistency is the name of the game. And you've got to appreciate that and take that into account and run with it. And I feel like your coaching group has really drilled that into my head. And it's, it's not going away. I mean, I'm, I'm a lot braver for having done your coaching group. I'll, I'll say that. Definitely. Mm, that's, that's great to hear. And I can, I could see it just by everything that you're doing. Thank you. Yeah. It's, uh, and, and I should say, I sh you know, I'd be uh, remiss if I didn't say this, but uh, the, the people in the coaching group, I mean, I don't know how you do it, but you pick this group that, oh man, just all kindred spirits. I uh, really like appreciate and genuinely like all of them. And, uh, made such strong friendships in that uh, short period of time. Um, and now suddenly I feel like, you know, I use the term like my cup runneth over. It's, I'm, you know, it's just so. so say that uh, again. They say my cup runneth over, right? My cup like, runneth over. Okay. Yeah. So um, 
I'm experiencing this time in my life where I'm seeing kindred spirits everywhere. And your coaching group really kicked that off. So have we given any thought as to what's next? So, <clears throat> I mean, I, I'm thinking about that all the time. Like I'm thinking about it all the time. It's a tough decision to make what, what's next. But uh, I'm definitely going back to, uh, you know, I would like to go back to what I was doing before this, for sure. Because I've realized over this journey that we tend to demonize uh, our jobs and our, um, you may not identify with this because you're part of that rare group of people who loves what he does, right? <laughs> and when I see you, I see a person operating from completely his strengths um, and bringing all his strengths to work, right? Um, and I haven't, I used to feel like, uh, you know, everything was because of my job, you know, like, I don't have time because I'm busy at work or I don't have time to exercise or eat well because I'm busy at work. Well, that is just an excuse. I've realized that a big part of that is just an excuse. No matter how busy your job is, you can always make time if you really truly want to do something. And so having realized that and recognized that there were pieces of work that I truly, truly enjoyed, very creative, very... Um, you know, allowed me to have a lot of control and uh, lead a team. I enjoyed working in a team. The power of a shared vision, it's uh, magical when that happens. So I love those kind of things. So I will go back to what I was doing uh, before I quit work. Um, but I also have discovered these new interests, writing. I love, I, I truly enjoy writing. Um, I want to uh, sing more. I want to dance more. I want to act someday. Um, I'm putting all these out there so that <laughs> the universe, if it's listening, will make my wishes come true. So we are listening right now. <laughs> are you going to sing something for us? Oh, no. I'm, my voice is... <laughs> I, I could sing a line. I, and if it sounds really bad, will you promise to edit it out? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> will, you, will you sing it anyways? I don't know. I'm really nervous that it's going to come out badly. And what if it does? Oh. <sighs> then maybe the universe will tell me, you're no good, darling. Just go back. <laughs> it's a good hobby there, Anisha. It's a good hobby. <laughs> well, I'll sing one line of my favorite song and uh, we'll let the universe decide if I'm okay. worth it or not star shining bright above you night breezes seem to whisper I love you but singing in the sycamore tree dream a little dream of me yeah that's awesome thank wow. you. Oh, you 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 got some you got some soul in your voice thank you <laughs> Ooh, oh man that's I, I get excited when i'm talking to people who who do anything with music um right yesterday or uh, yesterday two days ago this week sometime this week um it'll probably already it might no it's not gonna be out yet um it's always weird in the podcasting world when like you know because it's not live typically um, so it's like, is this episode coming out before or after or something that's already happened? Right, so right. It's just weird, you know, I, I have enough issues with time as it is. And so what happened to like, you know, it's like we're warping back and forth between between time. So was, I interviewed um, uh, Sean Winchester, uh, who was the, the former drummer of Silverchair. And, right, right. I saw that on Facebook. And he was doing this like beatboxing and he was amazing wow. at it. And I was just like, I kept asking him to do more of it. Um, <laughs> Cause, and I was just like, I just, I just want to hear him do that. And I wanted to like, you know, join him. And, I'm, you know, it's like, I can just get, that's, that's where I can get really kind of, um, or play comes out of me when there's, when there's music, yeah. I'm like, nothing else matters. Cause it's just right. it's fun and I feel it and it's awesome. Right, right. I feel the same way about music too. Like, I think a good part of our money is spent on music events. Uh, my husband and I love listening to live music. 
So, I mean, we were in uh, Nashville for a weekend and we went to this uh, place called Bluebird Cafe mm-hmm. um, where these four musicians just sitting in a circle uh, singing their songs one by one by one. Each song like just filled with so much vulnerability and like, you know, they're really putting their heart out. Uh, and it was this quiet space, no external noises. It was just such a treat. Such oh, a you treat. were telling me about this, and there's, there's like listening rooms where it's yeah. really there to you're really there to appreciate the music. Wait, right. and then I remember you telling me about the <laughs> the guy that was tapping his feet that was really bothering you. But who was the guy that was tapping his feet? The musician himself. <laughs> 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 I said that was great. Because I know, I mean, I, and I completely relate to that like idea of when there's any external noises, it's like the brain wants so badly to to drown that out, and it can't. I mean, yep. that's why in, in my office, you know, I had a, a I had like basic construction done to my office to because um, when I first started working here, there was these like really flimsy like. Uh, um, pocket doors that you could actually put your hand in between like the gap and that, like so there's like zero sound privacy and so when there was like someone you know if my colleague was working with one of his clients and they're in the hallway it's like and I'm working with one of my clients in my office I hear the client in my office I hear the people outside and my brain hears wah 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 wah, wah. and I could exactly so I, I asked uh, I, I, I asked my colleague who's the, the owner of the building so can you get a quote on how much it would be to like uh, build up the drywall and put in a really heavy pocket door. Mm. And he's like, okay. And so he did. He said, well, I got the quote. It's going to be like $800. And my first question was how soon can we do it? Yeah. And we did it. Yeah. And I'm so glad that we did it. See, it's these kind of things that we never think to ask for. Never, uh, you know, a big part of having ADHD is to recognize your differences and own up and uh, advocate for yourself. Mm -hmm. And for the longest time, I used to just be mad at myself for being the way I am. And today I'm, I'm much more adjusted in that department. I'm, you know, if I, I do, I don't respond well to like these little, little noises that go around around me. And um, it, it just, it's what it is. It's it's okay. I mean, it's some, something that doesn't help me, and I recognize it. Um, will I throw a fit or fight with somebody who makes a noise? No, I won't do that. But that doesn't mean that problem isn't there, you know? So you've never thrown a fit for someone making a noise? Well, I've given people nasty looks at theaters. <laughs> oh, I'll do that. I'll absolutely yeah. do that, and I'll make sure, <laughs> and I'll make sure they know that I'm giving them a nasty look. Yeah, it just you know, especially I, I especially don't like when people come to like the theater, theater, like not a mm-hmm. movie even. Um, you know, and these people are putting their heart out there and their talent out there. The least you can do is turn off your phone or put it on silent, and you know, watch them and give them the kind of boost they need. They don't need to be seeing glowing screens in the audience when Mm -hmm. they're trying to do their work. I mean, you know, being on stage is not a party. It's, it's a lot of work and, uh, you know, focus and remembering your lines and things. And I cannot imagine, I mean, I used to act uh, in college. I I don't ever remember seeing screens in the audience. I mean, I bet it's very hard to be on stage these days. Uh, uh, you know, looking at these screens in the audience. Mm, I, I would hope that maybe the the um, you know stage manager would announce something before the show actually begins. They do that, but I don't think most people really care. And um, you know, I have, I mean, I I have ADD. I would you would think I'd be the one who'd be like texting and doing a hundred things, but when it comes to the theater or any music event. Uh, I think both my husband and I are very, very much like this. Like we give it our all. We go there, we put everything away and we're just completely focused on the art. You know, and, I'm kind uh, of the same way. You know, it's, it's, I, w- I saw um, uh, Star Wars uh, on, on Christmas and um, you know, it's, it's the Jewish Christmas. We all go bowling, Chinese food and go bo- and see a movie. So it's, <laughs> uh, so I'm, um, I'm, um, in uh, the theater and I'm just thinking it's like everybody and this is during the previews though but like everyone had like their screen like their their phones out and I was just like 
you know, you're with people, you know, there's other stuff going on on the screen. And I was just, it was just really, I don't know, it was almost sad in some ways to see how many people were, you know, together yet so isolated because yeah. of, of yeah. their engaging in their screens. Yeah. And and not to sound self, I mean, not to sound judgy here, but I do that too. And oh, we so all do that. So right? do I, but. Yeah, we all do that. Like it's uh, something that's pervasive now that, you know, we have this uh, device that we're just like glued to and um, can't let go. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I definitely get twitchy if I'm like, where's my phone? I haven't looked at it in five minutes. Uh, you know, it's, and, and I wish I wasn't like that so much, you know, it's, it's, yeah. I've, I've acknowledged that, um, you know, it's, it's, um, but I don't know. I, I've, I guess I'm not motivated enough yet to do anything about it. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think, I think good design will solve these problems. Good design of tools that mm-hmm. will help you, um, help you maintain like this, uh, you know, balance between using your screen and not, mm-hmm. um, motivation is not the key here because if I tell myself you can't touch the phone, I will be on the phone the whole day. So if I find an app or something that blocks a, sc- a screen or an or another app, that's a way more uh, easier way to solve this problem than help expecting us to be motivated enough to turn these things off. I yeah, that. and, and I, I'm seeing more tools uh, te- and technology yeah. that are that are targeting self regulation. Um, things like Freedom.to. You know, I had uh, um, Fred Stutzman on on the podcast a while back. Um, you know, and it's the, the, the internet blocking software. Um, right. It's it's that idea of outsourcing willpower. You know, it's like, yeah. I know, uh, you know, it's like all these. So in, in the list of things that, of advice that I tell my clients, um, or it's like, do what I say, not as I do, here is one of them. Don't look at your phones an hour before bed. I think the last time I did that was because like, I left my phone charger in my car or something. My phone was dead. And I didn't feel like getting up to go get the, the charger. Mm-hmm. And it was probably one of the best nights sleep I ever I had. And it's like, okay, I know so strongly the benefits of not even bringing any technology into my bedroom. Yeah. But I still, yeah. have to, you know, it's, and so part of my, my, uh, the battle for myself with that is I use that sleep cycle app, which is, I think, amazing because mm-hmm. it, it wakes you up during the, your lightest phase of sleep around the time you need to get up. Which is right. which is turned me from like n- not a morning person to just to I can actually be a human being in the morning. <laughs> yeah, I'm still not a morning person, but like before, like if I got woken up and I was in a deep phase of sleep, it would take me three hours before I can do anything where I'm safe right. to be around other people. You know, yeah. it's so it's. Yeah, my aunt used to tell me that uh, Nisha doesn't smile before noon. <laughs> <laughs> is that true? It's like. <laughs> I mean, they didn't know at the time, nobody knew I had ADD, right? Like that it takes, you know, it takes us a long time to get started mm-hmm. up in the morning. I don't know if everybody's that way, but at least I'm that way. Um, but it was a big joke at home that I don't smile in the morning. You don't ever tell Nisha a joke in the morning. She'll just look at you with that scary face. And <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So let's see, where, where do we want to go? And I just realized that I don't think I've ever, we ever took a break. Um, so maybe we'll just have a, a, a commercial free episode. Um, how's that? Yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> well, why didn't you have commercials this episode? I forgot. It doesn't get much more ADHD than that. Right. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know, and I even said to you before I even hit record, I'm like, Mitch, I just, I really like just, talking with you and and so i was like Wait, we have to record this but it, it felt like just one of our conversations which was nice yeah i know it's i was worried about whether i'd feel like uh you know very self-conscious but it's been good so far it usually goes away in the first like two minutes right yeah yeah do you want to do you want to uh, share with for anyone who's actually still listening um <clears throat> what, what, I, what what i put you through before we hit record oh well um basically we we were testing sound quality and uh so basically i'm sitting at my desk except i have two pillows around me and my clean laundry mind you not dirty laundry clean laundry is all around my laptop to form sort of a fortress and um yeah and i'm sitting as still as i can um and i think one of the things you asked me if this was like some weird like april fools joke yeah. <laughs> that's that's the care that I take for you guys, the listener. 
uh, to make sure it sounds as good as it possibly can. That's awesome. Yeah. So, you know, this is going to be coming out this episode, um, you know, right before the end of um, of registration for the, the uh, my winter coaching group. Um, mm-hmm. If for, for someone who might be thinking about it, because we can all, I'm sure, relate to that idea of something we think about for a long, long time and not take action on. I was talking to someone, uh, I think yesterday or two days ago, that said that they've been thinking about joining the coaching group since they heard the first like promotion for it. Um, mm-hmm. and so they finally took action on it. What mm-hmm. would you tell someone who's kind of on the fence? Like what, what do you think would be an important thing for them to know? Um, I think I'm, I'm very much, uh, you know, agree with what you're saying about acting. You know, I was reading a book uh, by Barbara Sher. She's some, uh, it's a book called I Could Do Anything I Want If I Knew What It Was. And she <laughs> says in that, that, uh, you know, you want to act as soon as possible, instead of sitting on your plans. I forget the exact quote, uh, but she, you know, she makes a powerful case for acting uh, before you have all your ducks in a row, all your plans. Uh, We'll never have the most perfect plan. We'll never have answers to all our questions. Um, You know, on one hand, you know, if you do have questions about the group, the least bit you can do is just go go there and add some time on Eric's calendar and knock that out of the way. Um, you know, just see what what is the obstacles that are between you and uh, signing up for the group and, you know, get those questions answered. Um, but I will say, like, I was on the, uh, you know, I was on the fence for some time and um, you know, not allowing myself to... Um, see that I really wanted to do this. Um, You know, I was letting everybody else around me decide. So really go with your gut, like tell, uh, ask yourself, like, what is your gut saying? And I really believe your gut will tell you what to do. And um, if you're on the fence, chances are you want to do it. And you've, you know, you've been interested in doing it. So, um, you know, get all your questions answered and just sign up for it. um, You know, if, if you're just sitting on the fence just for the heck of it, because you're a lot better getting off the fence and walking a few steps, right, than just sitting on the fence six months later. Even if it's a few steps, I really, really believe. I mean, I came into the group with very few expectations simply because I, I didn't know what kind of a brand this was. And I didn't even know about the community a few weeks into the coaching group. I remember Eric being very surprised that, you're still not on the rewired community. And I'm like, I didn't know there was one, you know? Um, so I remember being very, uh, like, you know, apprehensive about it. But I mean, I cannot even tell you what a life-changing experience it has been for me. It, uh, it, And it can be, like, come into the group with those, like, with, uh, you know, low expectations and you'll take away so much because you can make it what you want it to be. That's that's the kind of group this is because you're working with people uh, who are, you know, who are going to be really empathic, empath- empathic and understanding and um, you can really make it a great experience for yourself. I hope that was a good push pitch. Nish, I, I couldn't have paid you to say something better than that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I mean, and I, 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 it's truly extraordinary to me, and it's really humbling to me um, to have members of, of the my coaching group who want to share their experiences with it. Because I think I do think it's it's true that that when you have an experience like um, you know what Nisha has described, that something does change inside um and uh you know it's it's i mean in myself included every group that i go through i feel i learn so much too um yeah. and it's you know we we become very close to the members of the people in, in this group because we're, we're we spend a lot of time together right right we do we, we spend a lot of time together and um i was i don't know if you caught the latest uh, anatomy of trust video yes uh, by Brené Brown. And, you know, watching that, you realize like a lot of the, many of the people in the ADHD community, you suddenly cut through the crap and very quickly get to a place of trust with each other. 
and it's, uh, it's possible only because we have this giant big shared experience and uh, you know being in a coaching group makes it you're forced to sit together with your shared experience and uh, it's wonderful i i really i mean i i didn't think like much was going to change in if you ask me in september what's new what's going to happen in the next few months i'd say not much but this completely came in and totally t- changed everything for me um i feel like i'm my biggest advocate now uh, because of the group so before i let you go um if anybody is listening is an employer what's your ideal job oh so many um and my ideal job is uh one where i'm given um you know a, like a sp- some space to breathe like a good mixture of structure and stimulation um you know sari solden in her book uh, journeys through adulthood she talks about these different variables in any any um, you know work environment and uh, i feel like that would be a great mix where i'm allowed to be creative where there is a structure but not too much and uh, you know some space where my my experience is uh, respected you know uh, a space where someone doesn't doesn't look up at me and goes so two years you just basically did nothing i don't want someone to tell me that i'm hoping that a prospective employer listens to my experience and says wow that's interesting i'm you know um grateful for your experience i'm glad that you did something like that and i have seen i have met people who are not uh, judgmental about this so i'm there is hope there is hope well i think that investing in yourself which you have done over the last 2 years is what more important thing is there than yes. that yes i agree it's the biggest gift you can give yourself and uh, yeah i lost 2 years of a paycheck a pretty good paycheck um but i'm very proud of what i did for myself uh, it's you be. uh yeah thank you Well, Nisha, thank you so much uh, for for sharing your your story and for coming on the podcast, um, for being a, a really valuable member of the community and of, of, uh, participating in the coaching group. Um, if people would like to reach out to you, either uh, read your blog or offer you a job, what's the best <laughs> way that they can reach you? Well, um, I'm guessing um, th- you know you can leave a comment on my blog. I'd really appreciate that if you could go and check out some of my uh, writing that would be great too. Um yeah that would be a good place to um I guess I won't you know email is a good way but like I'm always looking at my blog so you can leave me a comment on my blog and And what's the uh, uh, what's the uh, URL one more time? It's www.nishnu.com. Well Nisha, thank you so much. And now I have to unlearn calling you Nisha. And so, so I can call you Nisha the way your name is actually pronounced. This has been fun. I know that we'll, we'll continue to talk. Um, thank you so much. Thank you very much. This was a great talk. Um, and now on to my vulnerability hangover. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And I, I do think that that you may be the first guest who has said Brene Brown's name more than me in a single episode. <laughs> so thank you for that. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> All right, Nisha, take care. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Before I let you go and cue the banjo music, I wanted to just quickly remind you that right now in progress is the ADHD Palooza. That's the, the ADHD Women's Palooza. I talked with Linda and Terry last week. You can still register. This is a free online event. Uh, go to ADHD Palooza. That's P A L O O Z A dot com and register. There's a bunch of great speakers every day this week. And um, the grand finale will finish with me. I think it's probably just a coincidence. Um, at least on Saturday at 10 a.m. Eastern. I'm going to be uh, talking about supercharging your productivity. So if you haven't registered or, or you have not uh, checked out that event, go do that. Next week, we're going to be talking with Dr. Russell Ramsey. We'll be talking about ADHD and CBT. And then the following week, 
episode 100. This is going to be an episode like none other. You won't want to miss it. All right. I'll uh, talk with you guys soon. See you next time. Cue the banjos. Thank you for listening to another episode of ADHD Rewired. And if you're new to the show, welcome to ADHD Rewired. We are more than just a podcast. We are a community focused on learning, growing, and connection. You can see a full outline of this and all other episodes with all the links and other resources mentioned during this interview at ADHDrewired.com. Help support this podcast by checking out my sponsors. I use Zoom video conferencing nearly every day, and so can you. Go free or go pro. But please, go to erictibbers.com slash Zoom so they know that I sent you. And you can get a free audiobook from Audible at erictibbers.com slash Audible. And next time you shop Amazon, use the Amazon search portal at ADHDrewired.com. Com. A small percentage of your purchase will go to support this show, and it doesn't cost you anything extra. You can also support this podcast by leaving an honest rating and review in iTunes or Stitcher. This really helps other people find this show. And don't forget to hit subscribe so you never miss an episode. Don't just be a passive listener, be an active member of the ADHD Rewired community. We are on Facebook. You can like our page, but please submit your request to join our free and growing community. And don't forget to check your other inbox because I screen everybody before they come into our community. Looking for a coach? If you're still listening at this point and you answered yes, come to my website at ADHDrewired.com and schedule your free 20-minute consultation or... Call me at 224-993-9450. Is your school, business, or organization hiring speakers? I provide fun and engaging presentations full of practical solutions that both educate and entertain. Hire me for your next professional development day or corporate training event. Go to ADHDrewired.com slash talks. Thanks for listening. I'll catch you next week.